Welcome to the Teach Joyfully podcast, where we talk about all things elementary teaching with some mom stuff thrown in. I'm Lisa Burns, a teacher success coach, veteran elementary teacher, and mom of five. I'll be your host. Thanks for joining me today. Now, today I have a super special guest. She is sub extraordinaire Barb Mastro. Barb and I actually go way back. We met while teaching at the same school years ago. She's a high school swim coach, former competitive swimmer, wife, teacher, mom of two. She's worked as a PE teacher, a high school English teacher in just about every subject. She's strict, always fair, and loves those students like they're her own kids. And she makes sure that they know it, even when she's telling them to get their act together. All right, Barb, thanks for agreeing to be on the show today. I'm glad to be here. All right. So today we're going to talk about all the things that your substitute teacher wishes that you knew. So Barbara has been busy taking notes all week as she's been subbing so that she can share her best tips. So substitute teachers are super important, but in order to do their job well and keep our students on track, they need some help from us, the teacher. And now I know you've been busy taking notes, so let's go ahead and dive right in. So what's your first tip? My first tip is uh, a seating chart is so essential to knowing names. We always get a list of attendants or a roster and you take the attendance, but then you have to turn the attendance sheet into the office and you lose your list of who students are unless you wait until the end of class, which sometimes I do. So I have found over the years that knowing kids and knowing them by name gives you so much street cred right away. And they always look at you like, how do you know my name? Well, for me, I'm in the high school almost every day. I've been a band mom for seven years. So I know tons of kids through that. I coach on the swim team. I know tons of kids through that. And I have in the last four years been a long-term sub somewhere in that building Almost, I'd say 75% of each year, I've been a long-term sub for anywhere from 10 weeks to two weeks. So you get to know a lot of students that way, which is, for me, the most crucial thing to classroom management and not getting taken advantage of. For sure. Yes, it does help if you know the students. But a lot of times the sub comes in and it's a new school for them and they don't know the students. So when you think about that, A seating chart is extremely helpful because kids sometimes will switch seats and pretend to be someone they're not. I mean, they pull all kinds of tricks and we don't always think about that as the classroom teacher because we know the students already. So it's good to have that seating chart for sure. Okay, so tip number two. Lesson plans. Please do not leave me with nothing to do. It's the kiss of death. So if I have a, even if it's the barest bones of something, having somewhere to start is always helpful to making sure kids are on task, which for me, I tell kids all the time, school is for work. It's your job. You do your work at work and then you go home and relax and watch your show. And with technology, the way it is, the battle is they're constantly on their phones watching an episode of something. We are a virtual school. So they're on their computers with a double screen open watching a show. So if you've done any kind of work with brain science, you know that your brain cannot do two things at once. You focus in on one and then you focus in on another. So if you're watching a show or being distracted by some Snapchat or any other number of things that kids get distracted with, then they're missing parts of the lesson. So you can't do both things at once. So having lesson plans, at least having me know what the kids are supposed to be working on is always helpful. I like to know what they're learning. So usually if I have a list of what they're doing, I quickly read through the chapter or I make a copy of what they're working on and I try and quickly do it so that if kids have questions, then I can answer. Teachers who prepare ahead and leave me an answer key, for example, in math, I can write on the board and we can go through the steps to solutions And there's always one kid in the class that gets it. That's no problem. And that can be helpful if someone else in the class has a question or something that I don't understand. So lesson plans, knowing the flow of the day, you know, where they are, what they're learning and having something in your folder that 
is an emergency lesson is always helpful too, because sometimes we have to punt and you just do the best you can and keep them learning something through the day, not just letting them sit there. For us, it's 90 minute blocks. That's a long time to not have anything to do. The other thing that I like to do, which is part of my, you know, Mrs. Mastro's our sub for today, is I always do some random fun fact. So for example, yesterday I was in the classroom and my fun fact was, did you know that the stickers on fruit are edible? I'm a real person. I do teach. I have feelings. I want to have fun with you. And it just starts off the day with a smile. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Very cool. Very cool. That's really fun too. I think that anything you can do to have a connection with the students, having something that's interesting or funny, laughing, we know all of those things kind of relieve stress and relieve the brain. When you think about it, having a substitute teacher is actually really stressful for kids because they don't know who you are. They don't know how you're going to handle them. And so they're already ramping up with their stress before you've even walked in the door. And I think as classroom teachers, we forget that, that this is a change and change is really hard. Even if it's a sub they know, it's still hard. And so those are things that we need to remember as classroom teachers. And the more we can provide for a sub certainly makes things easier for everybody, for sure. Okay, so next tip. Number three on my list was emergency plans and a daily schedule. Just this week, we had a lockdown drill. Now I'm in that building every day for the last four years. So I know what the lockdown drill is. But if I didn't, I have to react immediately to lock the door, pull the shade, get the kids in a corner and keep them quiet. Or I've been there for fire drills and where do I go? Where do I take them out? Kids usually know exactly where to go because they've done it. But I want to know. I don't want to just assume that a kid will tell me the correct information out of the goodness of their heart. So having that in a folder that is directions for every drill that you have and where to go, I always look through it. So every classroom is different. Every classroom has a different place to go. So all of that information is really important, especially in our world that we're living in today. You just don't know. And it is true. Every classroom is different. So just because a sub has been in your building a lot, you can't assume that they know what to do because they have a different spot to go to or there is different procedure. And the students may have been trained slightly differently. And so you need to know, and you can't rely on the students in an emergency situation. They might panic. And then where are you, right? You know, you're the one who has to lead them. And I think sometimes it's easy to think, oh yeah, it's here, you know, but you know, you really do need to look through them as a sub and good subs do, and we need to provide that. So that's awesome. Okay, next tip. My next one was something to do with the kids, which sort of ties into the lesson plan. I am a girl with a brain and I know that I know more than they do. So leaving me with something to help to offer discussion, to be able to help go through something together as a class, that just makes the day go faster for everyone. And there's nothing worse than sitting for 90 minutes in a silent classroom. That stresses me out a little bit because I'm a people person. I like chatting with the kids and it's always more fun for everyone if we can do something together. So like I said, even in a math class, and I sub for AP calculus. I've never taken AP calculus. Math was not my level, but the teacher left me detailed solutions to the problems and we did them together as a class. And even when I've subbed in math classes, like in a team teaching situation, I sat there and listened to the lesson and go, oh yeah, I remember that now. Can I try a problem on the board? And so I'd go up and try a problem on the board and I made a mistake and the kids caught it. And I said, oh, that's awesome. Look, I didn't shrivel up and turn to dust because I made a mistake. You guys can come up here and try these too. But I wanted to do that as an example to them that you can get up and try, even if you're not sure. You can try and there is worth in trying, even if it's not correct 100%. And that's an awesome thing for them to have gotten out of it. If that's all they walked away with from the day with you as a sub, that's a win in my book as a teacher and as a parent. That's a win, right? That's huge. And I think that so often 
the idea of giving solutions, but not just that, like in language arts, you know, having discussion questions written out, not just here's the book chapter and have them read and answer the questions. You know, it's so much richer if students can have a discussion about things and providing the substitute teachers with discussion questions does open that opportunity for them to do more than just mark time and get check the box and do the basics, which is sometimes where we're at as teachers when we're gone, we're thinking, oh, well, it's this, but we're kind of dishonoring our subs when we do that because we're treating them like, oh, well, they won't want to do this or they can't do this. When in fact, our subs are smart people and they really can, and we'll make the day better for them too. And they're more likely to want to come back to our classroom another time. Well, and a lot of the substitutes are former teachers, not all of them, but a lot of them are like me and it makes it fun. I jokingly say I'm lobbying for a second high school diploma at this school because I've been a long-term sub in so many different content areas that I feel like, (laughs) you know, I think I've relearned everything again. I think I should get another diploma. So the other most important thing is a list of trustworthy kids. Now, for me, Yeah, I kind of know a lot of times I get my athletes in there. I know I can trust them or kids that are my children's friends. I know I can trust them, most of them anyways. But having a couple of kids who you know will give you the right answer, who you know if you send them to the office, they won't take an extra field trip and leave for 30 minutes, (laughs) which can happen. That's also important. And again, it goes back to having like street cred where you know you're not being taken advantage. So a sub mostly at the high school. So I jokingly say, and there's truth in jest, when a kid asks to go to the bathroom, I say, sure, but no field trips, no vaping. And we just had an incident where someone lit toilet paper on fire. So I said this week, and don't light any toilet paper on fire. And then they all laugh and they're like, okay. And they know that I'm not a dummy. I'm not going to notice that you were gone for 26 minutes while you, quote, went to the bathroom. And Do you think that it's helpful if you have, I mean, even at the elementary or middle school level and at the high school level, if you have like parameters of when children are allowed to leave, because you've taught elementary for years and years. And so when you think about that elementary student, how often do children need to go to the nurse, right? Right. (laughs) Or how often do they need for some little tiny minuscule, I can barely see it scrape or whatever, but they're distraught. And it's easier to say as a sub, okay, you can go to the nurse. But sometimes there's a procedure and policies and there's kids that are frequent flyers and it's like, oh, they're only allowed two nurse visits a week or they're only allowed this. Well, it's good to know that. And those are things that are important for us as subs to know, I think, don't you? Absolutely. You know your kids really well because you're with them every day. You know their personalities. You know who's having a bad day. You know who's just a little off. And it could be that any breakfast that, and that was one of the things I always ask kids, like, have you eaten breakfast today? And most of the time it's no. When I was in the classroom, you know, usually in a long-term sub, I always had some snacks or something because kids are kids and they get hungry. And so here, grab a granola bar or something, but you need to eat. And that's why I'm also known as mama Mastro in the building because I am that person. Like, I'm going to love you enough to tell you when you're awesome. And I'm going to love you enough to tell you when you're not. And they know that. And I have kids that come and find me because they know I'm there every day just to see my fun fact. Sometimes they come just to say hi. But I've kind of built up that trust level where they know that when I take over a classroom, they're going to be okay because it is stressful. I've had to come in when a teacher's left and How are we going to finish up? We have our capstone project. It was an English 12 situation where they were had a graduation requirement. And I tell them, I am working hard for you. I expect you to work hard as well and do your part. I am going home and doing my homework so that I can teach this content to you. And they appreciate that. They will honor that. Yeah, very good. Awesome. Okay, next tip. This is my last one on the list. I just feel like request early and often. If you know a sub and you like that sub, the kids will tell you, oh my gosh, she was horrible. She was mean, whatever. Take that a little bit with the grain of salt because it could just be like, no, you didn't get just to run around. But if you have someone that you know will hold kids accountable, I walk around and say, okay, that doesn't look like 
science today. Let's get your science work done. Then if you've done your work and you've submitted it, I don't really have a problem with you chilling out for a little bit, but make sure you get today's work done today. Get it done, turn it in, then you can go and relax. And that's just a life lesson, I think. But if you know you need a sub and you want me to be your sub, get it in the subsystem or text me or email me and say, are you free that day? I have that happen all the time. It helps me plan. And then you know that you have someone in the classroom who is going to take care of your kids while you're gone. Because I remember how much work it is to be gone. And it's not fun. And it's not a choice for anybody to choose to be gone all the time because it is a lot of work to have to leave plans. But if you have at the beginning of the year, a notebook that's set up that you can run with it, everybody knows it's red, it's purple, it's yellow, whatever color you want to choose it to be, and that's your subfolder, then I know what to look for on your desk and you know where to leave things. I know where to look when you left things and you know, you've requested and it's been accepted and everybody is covered. Yeah, for sure. And Certainly there's times when you simply don't know you're going to be out, you know, you're sick or whatever it happens, right? But if you do know, yes, early as possible really does help. Now, have you ever had teachers who have requested early and said, hey, we're going to be learning about such and such or have been giving you a little heads up about some things that might be coming up? Yes. I've been in, in the English department a lot, mostly because I subbed there. I realized having been a PE teacher and a swim coach for my whole career, and I got thrown into a English job. And I double checked with the principal. I said, you know, I'm a PE teacher, right? And he said, yes, but we need someone who can manage a classroom and they'll help you with plans. And I started doing it and I was good at it and I liked it and it was fun. And I've always loved to read. And so to be able to do that, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of work, but it was a lot of fun. And so Because of that, I have been in the English department a lot. And so when they know that they're going to be out, they'll say, hey, we're going to be in Great Gatsby. And sometimes, a couple of times, they've left Great Gatsby for me to do because it's one of my favorite books and units to teach. And I can incorporate all kinds of history, which I also love, the historical parts of the Great Gatsby and the Roaring Twenties and teaching them the Charleston and all of those kinds of things, playing jazz music when they walk in. So it makes the content of the book a little richer for understanding. And so they'll save that if they know that they're going to be out and then I'll get to prepare. Or I was a chemistry teacher this year and we're going to do balancing equations when you're here. So then I'll go and home and do some homework so that I know what I'm doing. So that not often, but sometimes will happen. Well, and I know that you actually went back and certified as an English teacher too. I mean, you, cause you spent so much time there. So to go back and get a new certification, you know, when you're the sub, that's pretty amazing. You think about it coming back and doing that, but it just shows your love for the subject and how much and how passionate you are about being the very best that you can be. And I think that to me is always been inspiring to me is how passionate you are about being the very best that you can be every day, whether you're the classroom teacher or the sub or anything else, you put your heart and soul into this for the kids and it shows. And a lot of it is, you know, as a sub is being able to think on your feet, which is true of any teacher, um, whether you're a sub or the classroom teacher, you know, it's having that flexibility and being able to think on your feet. But it's also as a sub, I think it's doubly hard because you're coming at it with a lot of stuff that's going on in the classroom and you have to figure out all the details of the every day while you're thinking on your feet for everything else too. That's true. You've heard me say this a hundred times and and so I don't want to offend anybody, but I always say, I just don't want to suck. I don't want to suck today. I want to do a good job. I don't want anyone to walk away from being with me and they say, oh, she was horrible. I ever want to be that person. And so I think the kids just really appreciate it. And when you get known, like I'm known now, they appreciate the fact that I'm there that day. And it is a level of comfort. We know her, she's okay. She doesn't suck and we'll be okay today. We'll get through it. And sometimes you have to say that like today is today. We're going to get through today. Tomorrow's a new day. Take a breath and we'll figure it out tomorrow. In the meantime, this is what we got to do today. Yeah, for sure. And I think too, 
kids just don't want to make mistakes. They don't want to look foolish in front of their peers. And it's really important that they understand that it's okay to try, like try to do your best. Sometimes it's good enough and sometimes you need to reevaluate and try again tomorrow. But today, today, let's worry about today, do your best today, whatever that is. And I think they know that about me, especially when I've been there for a long time, you know, several weeks, they get to know that about me. And I know that I get a better result from them because I'm not going to yell at them. And just like when I coach, I'm not going to yell at you if you have a bad swim. What does that accomplish? Nothing. Now, I might tell you you're being a knucklehead, straighten up, but that's done with love. And that's not yelling at you and making you feel like you're an idiot for today. For sure. So, for love sure. you enough to tell you when you're awesome. Love you enough to tell you when you're not. And I think that's just being honest. Yeah, 100%. And you know what? The kids do appreciate it because they know when they're not being great. They know when they're missing the mark and to have someone call them out on it. In a lot of ways, it's like, oh, you noticed, right? Because sometimes that stuff flies under the radar and they really just want to be seen and heard more than anything else. They don't really want that to slide, although sometimes they wish it would. But quite frankly, they have more appreciation for you and they'll have a better day if it doesn't slide. Well, we talk about make good choices today because life is easier when you're making good choices. It just is. You're right. Well, Barb, it was so great to talk to you today. I'm super excited about your tips. I hope they're helpful to everybody. That's it, my teacher friends. We're out of time and I'm out of breath. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you liked today's episode, I love it if you'd go to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and leave a review. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. Also, you can continue the conversation online with me with my Facebook group, the Teach Joyfully Podcast Community, where elementary teachers can connect, get help, and encouragement for all kinds of education and parenting topics. You can find the show notes and links to all the resources mentioned in today's episode on my website at www.hopeineducation.com forward slash podcast. And remember, a happy teacher is a good teacher. Until next time, teach joyfully and take care of you.